This is the I Love Success Podcast. I'm Peter Jurukowski, and I have made a vow to myself to help as many people as possible to achieve their dreams. Let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome back to the I Love Success Podcast. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I'm so grateful that you're here with me today, that you have decided to do something with your life that you're proud of and that makes you happy. And, you know, I'm here on this journey to help you with that. I can't do it myself. That's why I have people from all walks of life coming on the show, sharing open-heartedly. It's, I'm humble because I, I get connected with so many incredible people. Uh, we talk about UFC champions, coaches, Olympians, entrepreneurs, 9-11 survivors, authors, whatever it is. It, and they all have a cool story. And you that are listening right now, I know you have a cool story. I recently went back home to spend some time with family. And my father, that is my karate sensei, he said, everybody has a superpower, son, uh, but not everybody uses it. And they don't find that you know, support to do it. So here we are. We're supporting you. We're ready to do this. Please, before we get started, my mission is to help at least 10 million people to go after their dreams in 10 years. I certainly can't do this myself. So just, just promise me, this is all free, by the way, free. So if you like what we're doing, share it with somebody that needs to hear this message. And uh, so we can grow, help more people and... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Before I introduce this week's guest, I also want to thank Remarkable 2, uh, which is basically a way of writing digitally, but it feels like you're doing it the old school way. I'm, I've written down goals since I was 15. Uh, shit, I'm getting old now. <laughs> but I, I truly believe in pen to paper, not typing it on your, your phone or on your computer. I mean, that's better than nothing, but pen to paper, I think is the best way of you know, putting your thoughts and making them reality with Remarkable, you can do that digitally. It's a super cool device that I like. I prepare my podcast, I download articles, I get rid of all the, you know, advertising that comes online. I can just read and contemplate. Anyways, this is not about me. This is about honoring this week's guest. She is a mindset coach and an incredible human being uh, she she has this warmth around her and i have only emailed with her and, and this is the first time we're meeting virtually and uh, I, somehow i it it she makes my heart heart smile so i want to welcome petia kolibova to the i love success podcast Oh my gosh, thank you so much for such a beautiful introduction. And isn't it beautiful? I believe that Maya Angelou said it, that people will forget what you say, what you did, but they will remember how you make them feel. And that's something that I really stepped into last few years. Like, what is the imprint that we are creating in people's lives? How do we make them really feel? And I absolutely love your mission into helping other people and making it such a beautiful way of having a free resources, because that's how I started my own journey. When I was going through, you know, my own darkness in life, podcasts and motivational videos and audios were something that really helped me. And I would even dare to say like, saved my life. That was something that gave me hope and that gave me tools to keep going when I didn't feel like going. So I really want to honor you and like, put it back to you and on your play to really honor you for the work you are doing in the world. Thank you so much, Petya. So let's talk about that. As with every great story, people that want to help usually has something that happened to them that made them grow and now they want to help others. What, what happened in your life that made you come on this journey? 
Mm, thank you so much for asking. And I love that. Yes, because when people ask me why did I became who I became now, like I'm, you know, successful podcast host and owning a six figure online coaching business, marrying the love of my life in a couple months. And most importantly, I'm really changing lives, you know, through my podcast, through my retreats. And it hasn't always been this way. There were days when I didn't want to live. I grew up in a small town back in Europe in Czech Republic, hence that's where my accent from. Um, and I was, you know, physically and mentally abused by my stepfather. And that created a story. The story that I've created was that I'm unlovable and I'm unworthy. And I always have to do things for people to see me and hear me and value me and for three decades in my life, I've been doing this, the cycle of looking for outside validation and looking for outsourcing happiness, outsourcing worthiness and looking outside of me. And it just brought me to my knees and not humbly to my knees, but back to my knees when I didn't want to live. I didn't want to be here. And I'm sharing this story openly because I know there are so many people suffering quietly. There's so many people who are just going through the motions, going through depression, anxiety, feeling alone. My own uncle, he suicide, you know, 12 years ago. And um, I know there are so many people who are doubting themselves. That's why I love the work you're doing because you are bringing people back onto light, onto path and sharing stories that are going from you know trauma to triumph to not to brag about how amazing our life is and we made it it's not that we'll always be on the journey we will always be facing challenges right it's it's really about how we face these challenges and how we are feeling and who we are becoming along this journey so i became coach because i needed someone like me i needed someone who would hold my hands someone who would give me hope i think that's what i really 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 needed hope I didn't need it strategies. I didn't need it mindset back then. I needed hope. Yeah. And that's what I'm giving now to people. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm curious, Petya, how like how did this happen in your life? And how how did like when did you reach rock bottom and 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 started to, you know, find hope again? Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. And one thing that I want to, um, one thing that I really want to bring up, sometimes people think that they need to hit a rock bottom yeah. in a, in order to be able to rise, but that's not always true. Sometimes what happens is that enough, it's enough. We get to the point that enough, it's enough, or we are feeling that there must be more in life. So for me, my rock bottom was my second, um, I don't want to say second attempt of suicide, but I came to the point that I, I knew that if something doesn't change, I don't want to be here. And I was, I was on the outside, everything looked great. And that's the challenge. Sometimes everything looks great on the outside. I had a corporate job. I was married to a handsome guy. I was doing fitness competitions. I had, you know, six pack and rocking body and great corporate income, but inside I was dying inside. I was miserable inside. I felt empty and you know, that just perpetuated my eating disorder. I created eating disorder when I was 11 years old and I had it for 18 years. It was most of my life. And it was because I felt so empty and unlovable that food was my only friend and help back then. So I, I was almost 30 years old and I realized that people think that my life is great and it sucked. And I felt shamed and I felt guilt because how do you want to complain about narcissistic husband when everything on the outside looked great? How do you want to complain about toxic environment in your work when you're climbing the corporate ladder? How do you want to complain about your eating disorder when everybody is admiring your six pack and your body? I just felt that I am a big imposter, right? And and that when this will all blow out, like people will just judge me and I will be alone. So I got to the point in my life that I realized that something has to change because I don't want to live like this. And back then it was almost a decade ago. It wasn't as easy as now. Now we listen to podcasts. We, you know, go to uh, TikTok or we go to, you know, like Instagram and we look for these people who already overcame these traumas back then it wasn't so easy. But thankfully, I uh, found Louise Hay 
and I found, you know, Dr. Wayne Dyer and Tony Robbins and Joe Dispenza. They became my online mentors and they became my way showers and hope bringers. And that's what slowly started to plant the seeds of possibilities for me because I was thinking to myself, wow, if it's possible to change your life when you are in your 50s and heal yourself from cancer, like Louis Hay did, how can I heal myself from eating disorder? Oh, when you can create a business that is impacting millions like Tony Robbins, how can I do the same? So I started to asking myself a different questions instead of like, why is this happening to me? Or why am I unlovable? Why am I not enough? I created different questions. And as we all know, the different questions will create a different answers and your focus shift. So that's what really shifted in my life. And it wasn't like, you know, click and my life changed to amazing. I started to open myself up to possibilities, to different perspective, and it was a journey and it always will be, but now this journey feels fulfilling to me. Thank you for sharing that, first of all, and I, I think it's, life is so crazy, you know, because we see, I mean, look at you, you're, you're beautiful, you had a six pack and you had all these things that everybody is thinking you are living the dream or having a great life and and it's an empty shell which I think we can all relate to at some points in our life that we feel feel that our inner self is not aligning with you know the outer world which which is really really hard and also I know I know for myself like when that happens, it, it makes me almost angry with myself. Why, why, why aren't I appreciating what everybody else is seeing in me? How, how did you, yeah, how did you, how did you, you know, work with that? You know, and, and that's what you're describing. It's like so many people are suffering quietly because there is this guilt and shame of like, oh, my life, it's good. I should be thankful because this is not so bad. I remember when my ex-husband told me that, well, I'm not beating you up. I'm not drinking and I'm not like, you know, gambling. So you should be thankful, right? Because like, this is good. And I'm like, this can be it. Like, this can be like, you're comparing the worst with the worst. And then you're telling me like, well, I'm not doing the worst thing. So you should like, shut up and be happy. Right. But there was no intimacy. There was no understanding. There was no companionship and friendship. And, you know, it, it was just so hurtful inside. So for me, it was like, the first step that I truly believe that I took it start trusting my feelings because when you are in this in this place that you're feeling like oh i should be happy but it doesn't feel right it doesn't matter what anyone else is thinking outside of you because they're not living your life you're the only person who is going to be waking up with you until the rest of your life i will that you will find the love of your life and you will you know like take a last breath with them at the same time and you will be surrounded with family and friends made it be your ending i wish that for you and the only like really guarantee and security that we have in life is that we will leave this life by ourselves right like you with you you will be there it can be in your sleep it can be accident whatever right but it will be you with you so if you're validating yourself by what other people are thinking your life will be always looking like all other people but not yours you won't own it so the first step, it's really start validating and feeling your feelings. If something doesn't feel right, it's not right, you know, and asking for help. Very often we think that when I ask for help, it means that I'm weak. It means that people will judge me or people will think I'm a bothering them or a burden to them. But when we ask for help, it's this beautiful part of like receiving, right? Like we are like, oh, I love giving. I'm a generous person. Well, you're not a generous person if you don't allow other people to give you back. It's this full circle of receiving and giving. So asking for help, putting the ego on the side and letting people to guide you. Sometimes my new clients, they tell me like, oh, Petya, I don't want to bother you. I'm like, 
excuse me, by you messaging me, you're allowing me to live my purpose. It's an honor for me. My clients won't call me at, well, they don't have my number, but they are not going to message me at like 1 a.m. and say like, hey, Betty, I'm bored. I'm watching Netflix. I don't attract people like that. Women who come to me want to create changes and there are beautiful, loving boundaries, but it all starts with you. Yeah. And how, how did you go from being unlovable till you know, start loving yourself. I, I think that's the hardest challenge we all face to actually love our, ourself. Mm, that's such a beautiful question. Thank you for asking. I remember when I started my journey of like healing, I mentioned Louise Hay, right? She is an incredible author and she has her publishing company. She passed away a couple of years ago, but she had like 94, you know, beautiful 94 and she was beautiful and vibrant. And I remember I was watching one of her videos and she said, go to the mirror and say, I love you. And when I heard it from her, I didn't even lift my booty from the floor because I'm like, that's a waste of time. Why would I do that? I don't love myself. I don't even like myself. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like that was this aha moment that I want other people to love me. I want other people to respect me. And I don't do that for myself. So that was like this big aha moment. I'm like, uh oh, so back then I wasn't able to love myself. I just wasn't. I look at me and I saw all of the flaws and everything that was wrong and everything I want to improve. However, I was open and willing to start accepting myself. So that was a place where I started. I went to the mirror. I'm like, I'm open to accept you. I'm open and willing to accept you the way you are. And I kept doing this. And I kept like looking into mirror. And instead of looking at the flaws, I look at every time I look at the mirror, I either smile or I say something nice to myself like, Oh, actually, your lips are really nice. Oh, I actually like your long hair. Oh, the dress today. It's really cute. I know it's really superficial that we are like, you know, the inner beauty and all these things, that's beautiful. But when you're going from the darkness and you see everything that is wrong with you, you get to start on the outside level and it will start creating the inside feeling of feeling better. So that's, that's like this beautiful alchemy in life, right? Like really transmuting this energy from like, I'm so outwardly oriented and I need the validation from others. Okay, you need validation. Great, don't judge it. Give yourself the validation. Give yourself the things that you are so craving from others. And then when you're feeling better, you will start choosing better. You will start attracting better because you're not needy anymore. You're loving, even if you're loving your dress, even if you're loving your smile, even if you're loving today's weather, you will be the love that you're craving. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And how, how long did that take for you, that journey? Um, I'm still on the journey. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's, Let's be, be honest. honest. Yeah. That's like, it's going to be always the journey. There are, for example, I'm so blessed that I overcame my eating disorder for like nine years. Now I'm, you know, healthy. Oh, wow. um, That's big. Thank you. It's huge because I never thought it will be possible to overcome. It's like addiction, right? Addiction to alcohol, smoking. I was addicted to food. And so that was like me overcoming the addiction. So that is healed. And there are still things that come up for me like, oh, am I good enough as a coach? Am I good enough as, you know, the influence that I want to create in the world? Is my podcast really meaningful? And I have over 100,000 downloads, right? So it's not like I'm talking to a bird in my backyard. <laughs> but there is like every new level will bring in new things you get to work on. But that's why we came here. We came here to evolve. We came here to grow. And it's going to be different. And I allow myself these seasons. There is a season that I'm like, hey, I'm a really badass. I have a six-figure online business and I love my clients. And there are days that I'm crying and I don't want to do anything. And I'm sitting in a shower and I'm like, this sucks because 
I need a new team members and I don't have the budget for it and all these things, right? So it's 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 a different or I want to be with my family in Czech Republic and I can't right now. So there are going to be different challenges yet the, the growth and the journey will be always there. There will be days you look into the mirror and you like wink at yourselves like looking good. And there are days that you're like, you should probably stop eating donuts and pizza and go to the gym and look at those jeans. They're really tight. Like what are you doing, right? So it's going to be seasons and you get to accept it. I think that's, you know, my background is as a martial artist and, you know, I'm a fighter, but it's also a whole different way where you work on yourself and become aligned with who you, who you are. And, and I can say that journey is really difficult, especially when you have, it sounds like you have high expectations. And I know for a fact that almost everyone that's listening to this show uh, have extremely high expectations of themselves. Otherwise they wouldn't even be here listening. So how, how do we deal with high expectations and let them guide us in a positive manner instead of a negative manner? Mm, I love that question so much. And if I may, I will bring a little bit of boo-boo in here, you know, because- Do anything. <laughs> it's your show today. <laughs> like, go for it. I yeah, love go it. For Thank it, you girl. so much. Um, so when I started first my business, my first business was social media marketing agency. I became entrepreneur by accident. I didn't, I didn't plan it. I never wanted to be entrepreneur. I was always thinking it's hard work. It's too much work. You're bringing it home. You don't have any personal life You're responsible for people. So all these stories that I created, I was like, oh, I will never be entrepreneur. Then I got fired from my corporate job. I'm like, oh, what do I do right now? And back then I had two clients for social media. So I grow it. But I was working seven days a week. I was falling asleep with my laptop, falling asleep with my phone because I had very high expectations for me. But it was the high expectation, not only to be my best, but also to do everything and anything I can do for others. I was tired. I was exhausted mentally, physically burning out. I was doing this for almost two years. And I'm like, oh my God, this can be it. Like I have my own business, but I'm working more than I was working in a corporate. And the months they were like up and down, right? Like you have months that are amazing. I was like, oh, I love entrepreneurship. This is amazing. I'm making so much money and I'm working from my backyard or pool, whatever, right? And there are days they're like, okay, I have three clients who just left or terminated the contracts. I don't know how we'll pay the bills. So I was a lot in my masculine energy do, 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 provide, protect, plan, and all these strategies. And I just completely disconnect from my feminine. And we all have feminine and masculine energy, right? So we have this beautiful blend and we get to learn to balance it. So what I learned on my journey is I get to bring more joy. And why I started to ask myself these questions was because I was sick all the time, I was like, I had a problems with my throat because I wasn't speaking my truth. I wasn't expressing myself in your body. If you don't listen to your body, it will shut you off. It can be a little knocking and then it's louder and louder and louder. My body was screaming at me. So I'm like, okay, something has to change. I don't want to be working like, you know, 16 hours a day and like seven days a week. What can I do? So I asked myself, okay, I started my business and there were parts of it that I really like. What is it that I like? Okay, I like the relationships. I like the connections. I love the loyalty. I love working with women. So I wrote the list of the things that really light me up, the things that I really loved. And then I wrote the list of the things that I don't like doing, right? And that's where my second business of coaching really came up live because now I'm doing things that light me up and I delegate the rest. And of course, come on, like there will be things that I don't feel like doing, but to shifting these expectations, it's really learning and realizing that it's not just you. 
you didn't came here and you know it because you said it at the beginning of your podcast. I cannot do this alone. When I started my business, I had such high expectations that I didn't want to ask for help because nobody can do it as well as me. I cannot be delegating because people don't know. They don't know my brand. They don't know my heart. Nobody can do the messaging like I'm doing it, right? So putting yourself like the God, like the almighty, I have to do it all by myself. It's impossible. You can't. So I ask myself, what brings me joy? I ask myself, what can I delegate now? And just found a VA to help me with a couple hours and a couple tasks. And I freed myself to do more of the things that light me up. And I became a magnet. I became a magnet for opportunities and clients because now I'm not frustrated with my nose in my phone, but I'm looking up and I'm being present, right? So it's really about shifting your energy. And if you have really high expectations, you get to really ask yourself, what is the essence that I really want to be achieving? When you say like, I want to help 10 million people, but why? Why do you want to help 10 million people? It's not about that number. Because if you save one person's lives, oh my gosh, you have done more than most people will, right? Because I did have clients who were depressed, clients who didn't want to live. And we shifted it. I saved their lives. Or they left a toxic relationship or marriages or toxic job that would in the end harm their bodies and health. So we can talk about 10 millions or I saved one person's life. That person is here because of you. But what is the essence? Why you want to be doing that? It's really about the essence. So get really honest with yourself. Are you doing it for fame? Are you doing it for money? Are you doing it for feeling good? Are you doing it because you wish that there would be somebody who existed there? Are you doing it because it brings you immense joy and it makes you feel alive? There is no judgment. If you do it for money, do it. Like I do what I do and I love having money because more money I have, more people I'm helping. We're supporting, I'm supporting my family financially in Czech Republic. I'm supporting kids in Bali who are disadvantaged to learn English. It's it's not about what you do, but why you do it. And it's not about like create this big why and if it's not big enough and doesn't make you cry, that's a BS, right? Because I felt so guilty and so out of my path because, you know, like, It wasn't clicking for me. It wasn't lighting me up to sit down and write my huge why. I'm like, I'm confused. I don't know. It's the essence of the things. No, I love that. And as speaking of the essence, I I want to dig a little bit deeper into, you know, feminine energy, especially for us uh, guys, you know, and I think I am someone that has had a tremendous hard time with that. And I know uh, my wife, she's a doctor. She says most of the people who, you know, are not asking for help when they're depressed uh, are guys because it's that pride. Hey, we're masculine. And, And me, like my whole life was being a fighter. You know, I can't show that I'm weak because then, uh, my opponents is going to, you know, take advantage of that. And that, that, that came into my whole life, building that aura that, and I didn't like that at all. So I'm, I'm much better now, but I know there's so many guys out there that have problem with the feminine energy. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that and what, what we can do to tap more into that. I love that question. Thank you so much, first of all, for being so honest and really like open, you know, because you could be like, oh, this is cold. It doesn't apply to me, but we all have our, you know, areas that we get to work on. And I love that because uh, my fiance, he's a men's coach, right? He uh, helps men to master the men within. And this is something that men come to him with, right? They're so focused on just like doing and performing and providing and like just planning and it's like this this hard shell that men put on because that's how you were raised like you gotta suck it up you gotta be strong you gotta go and do things right instead of allowing the flow there has to be a flow and the feminine energy it's receptive it's nurturing it's allowing it's and I think it's beautiful because it's the emotional and intuitive and whether you recognize it or not you even as a fighter you have to use your feminine side which is the emotional which is the intuition you sometimes know before even your opponent like moves the hand how they will move you just like you feel it you sense it that's the intuition that's the feminine energy coming out that's the feminine guidance and then the masculine goes and goes with 
the masculine, you know, like feminine and masculine together. Feminine, you have the intuition, masculine goes and you do that thing. You do that, you know, move. So to bring in more feminine energy into your life, it's bringing in more joy. It's listening to your intuition. And it can be as easy as like waking up in the morning and do I feel like a coffee or do I feel like a tea? How does it feel like in my body? It's being connected with your body. It's being open and receptive. And sometimes it's as, as easy as when somebody compliments you to say thank you. Because that's the part of the receiving, to be open, to be able to receive things into your life so really asking yourself how can i bring in more playfulness how can i bring more joy how can i put my guard down even if it's just for two minutes even if it's just with people that i know but just a little bit because without that balance of masculine or feminine i have client she's a female but she's too much in her feminine she has beautiful inspired idea she's in a flow she's a reiki energy healers but then she doesn't have her pricing she doesn't have her offer packaging that's something that i had to step in and invite the masculine to do something about her gifts and her feminine so we all have to have this blend so I think that to invite a feminine means being more receptive, to be more open, to be more intuitive and really recognizing and allowing yourself to feel, feel your feelings, having the emotion, knowing that you are not um, a robot, right? You are not a machine, you are a human being, not the human doing. So when you recognize that, you will be able to receive even more opportunities, even more fun and joy and pleasure. I know that so very often we are feeling guilty about pleasure, right? And we are working on our guilt and shame. And that's something that feminine energy allows you, whether it's pleasure of just like free time or enjoying a great food or smelling something good or being in a water, like really incorporating the senses and being present, that's what real success to me is, you know, the richness and abundance of every single moment. Yeah, I, I love that. I think, you know, if if we're going to share open heartedly, I mean, this is when you say this, I realize that my best moments in my life when I'm actually performing at my highest is when I allow both energies uh, because I also I also give room for what can happen. Uh, and I'm I'm a I'm very good at goal setting. I even wrote a book about it. I usually always achieve my goals, but the problem is that I I sometimes I don't bring in enough joy, and that is ruining the journey for me. And now when I look back and with everything you said, the times that I've allowed the joy to come in, I'm things are actually going better. So I think for people listening, like it's, it's essential if you want to, if you want to live, live that full life, right? Absolutely. I think it's really necessary, you know, because it's not about achieving the things and that's great. Listen, I have my goals. I achieve them. I'm living them. But the thing is like enjoying the journey, the achievement of it's not when, when I have the body, when I have the car, when I have the house, when I have the six pack, when I have the money, right? Because then you are just living in a when land. And that's what I used to do most of my life. You know, when I finish my school, then I will be happy. When I, you know, release some weight, then I will be happy. When I get married, I will be happy. But it's postponing your happiness. And when you get to those goals, yeah, it's great, great. I have that. But was I really enjoying it? Was I really enjoying the process? Uh, what does it really mean to me to achieve my goal? Why do I want to achieve that goal? What is, again, the essence of it, right? Why do I want to be making five-figure months? Why do I want to have a multiple six-figure business, right? Why I wanted those things. So it's not about like, okay, cool, I have it. Now I have five-figure months. I used to be praying for $3,000 a month just so I can cover my bills. And now I have, you know, multiple five-figure months. And I'm like, oh my God, like I'm living my dream life. I'm really present to it though. I I didn't used to be. Now I'm like, I'm living what I prayed for yeah. and everything else that will come to my life and that it's coming 
it's like the cherry on the top. It's extra. And I'm so open and so eager for the extra. Like we want a bigger house, we want a bigger car. We are planning for a baby next year. We have a wedding in two months, you know? So all these things are beautiful and they are extra. It's like a treat from the universe, right? So how can you love what is knowing that so much more it's coming? Because if you don't appreciate what is and the journey, even when you're going uphill, you get to appreciate that. You know you will climb up. But if you don't look around throughout the journey of climbing, then why? What is it for? No, you're right. And I mean, one thing that I've noticed in my life, and I, I think people listening might be able to relate, is that, and this is probably a masculine energy, is that when I when I achieve something, I feel like I need to work harder in order not to lose that, mm -hmm. uh, quote unquote, and also going to the next level instead of enjoying where I actually am. And that, that never ends, by the way, which is, which is crazy. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. And, and that's absolutely the thing that when we achieve something, we want to go into the next, the next, the next. And that's when you get to bring in the, the faith, whether it's in God, the universe, source, energy, there is something bigger holding all of this together. Like if we believe it or not, they're just something else. And that something always provides for you and guides you and protects you. Even when we're going through our challenging times or traumas or things that we feel like we didn't deserve, right? Um, it's always guiding us. So you get to trust that there is so much more that this came from instead of like, oh, I, now I have to be working harder. And it's fascinating that you share that because I learned that the less I work, the less I try, the less I push, the more I receive because I'm open, I'm present to it. I used to work seven days a week and I was working my booty off and maybe I make $3,000, $4,000. Now, like I said, I do multiple five figure months and I work three days a week. It's not about working harder. It's about being more in alignment. And when I say alignment, it's being aligned with who you really are and why you came here. Yeah. Doing the things that light you up. That's what we need. We don't need more people who will suck it up and go to the job that they hate and then they're mean to their family and friends because they're feeling frustrated because that resentment will build up whether you like it or not. We need more people who are lit up and doing things that light them up. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And speaking of that, I'm thinking about ego. And when you were asking, like, why do you do this? What, why is it important to you? And I know that ego is part of it, you know? Uh, so let's talk about ego. Mm -hmm. Is ego a good, bad, or neutral? And how do, <laughs> how do we become friends with our ego? Oh my gosh, I love it. I love that question. And that could be like a podcast for another hour, right? I know. But, uh, the thing is like, there's nothing good or bad. It's your perception, right? It's really your perception. Your ego, it's, uh, it's part of you, whether you like it or not, whether you think it's good or not, whether it's bad, whatever you want to believe it, it will be always there, right? The ego helps us to protect us, to go and achieve things and be safe, right? It's it's, it's, it's like this primal, it's like this primal instinct. So we go, it's not good or bad. It's there and it always will be there, but it's like befriending it. Like you said, it's befriending it and be okay with that. And it goes back into these seasons of your life. There is time that ego, it's really healthy for you because you're like, Hey, I'm building business. I'm building a team. I get to like have this, and this is what we're planning. So you get to be like, step into your ego and get the things done and then know when to step out and when to disconnect and when to be present. Yeah. I think that's, that's usually the hardest thing, right? And I think most people experience that. If, uh, I had had Daniele Bolelli on my podcast and we discussed uh, Bruce Lee. He has re researched Bruce Lee and Bruce Lee is one of my idols. And the, the whole question about the podcast was, was Bruce Lee happy? And uh, you, you can check the podcast out if you want to know uh, like what we found out. But looking at, at that, you know, and looking at life, what is happiness and what is success? And are, are those the same thing? Hmm. 
Wow, I love that question. And I don't, I don't know if, if like we can like put it in the same, like even space, right? Success and happiness. Like what does success mean to you? What is it really? Like for someone, it can be having a, a million dollar company, right? For someone, it can be having two healthy kids at home. For someone, it's to be healing from a chronic disease. That can be success, right? And happiness, I feel like happiness, it's outside, right? Like happiness, it's I'm happy when, right? So I'm happy when I'm spending time with my loved ones. I'm happy when I um, am watching a great movie. I'm happy when I'm in nature. But those all things are influenced by outside. And I feel that joy, it's internal. Joy can be lasting. Joy, it's like this inner peace of knowingness that, uh, you know, like you're exactly where you're meant to be. You're doing what you're meant to be doing and doing it with the people that you want to be doing it with. So, so like, happiness can be success and success can be happiness but it's really only your perception and explanation of the word even when i say abundance when you know because everything i'm doing it's about abundance but what does abundance mean to you yeah i i it i agree with you it's it's interesting because what i'm trying to do here is redefining success and i think most people when they think of success what they really mean is performance in X field. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is not what I believe success is. I think it's something completely different. And it's about living in alignment with who you are and, and making the world around you better. Uh, that's, that's part of my definition of success. And speaking about abundance, I've been thinking about that the last couple of days because I... I want to, no, let me be totally honest. I, I want to believe in abundance, but I'm not there yet. So I'm, I'm telling myself, you know, when I'm looking at my vision board that I have in front of me, I'm telling myself when I'm doing something that is out of my comfort zone, I'm, I'm telling myself abundance, abundance, abundance. But on these morning walks that I had the last couple of days, I got to be honest and say, Hey, I am not there yet. So maybe you can help me and the people that are listening that are, you know, either they're have full on scarcity mindset. I'm no, I, I don't have that, but full abundance and trusting the universe completely. I'm not there yet. Mm. Thank you for being so honest. And I love that, you know, because I was on my journey and I'm, like I said, we'll always be on the journey. There will be always ebbs and flow. And, you know, you get to first define abundance. What does abundance mean to you? Does it mean that you're always provided and taken care of, right? That's one thing. Is abundance living a comfortable or rich life? Is abundance to have amazing relationship, amazing health? For me, abundance, I think about fulfillment, right? Feeling fulfilled in my life and do whatever, whenever, with whoever I want. And like abundance for me, it's freedom. That's what I equal it to, right? Like, my biggest like success in life is being abundantly paid to be me right it's beautiful i'm abundantly paid to be me right now in my life and it's freeing and liberating so when you think about abundance you are let's slow down and say when you think abundance you think right you think you're in your head because very often it's more challenging to drop into your heart when you're in your heart, you know. When you're in your heart, you trust. It's like when you're hugging your wife and you're having a moment and you're looking into her eyes, you know. You know you love her. You know she loves you. There's this beautiful moment when everything stops and you know. You don't need a proof. You don't need the evidence. You know she loves you, right? You're in your heart. Now, when we go up back in your head, you can be thinking, she forgot to make me a lunch. She doesn't love me. She forgot to pick up my laundry. You know, she didn't give me a kiss when she was waking up this morning. You're in your head. The same happens with abundance. You can be in your head and thinking, well, 
how does it work this abundance thing because i'm like keep working on it and i'm looking in my vision board and it's not happening and i am repeating these money mantras and my money is still the same or i still see the red numbers or why is it not like rising faster than i want it to be rising like why i'm not abundantly paid if i'm doing so much work so when you're in your head your head needs evidence you're not yet in your heart so when your mind needs the evidence, you give it to. Where is already abundance in your life? Start writing down the abundance in your life. There's abundance of air. There's abundance of fresh water, probably where you live. There is abundance of electricity, internet. There's abundance of hugs and kisses if you're happily married, right? There's abundance of your heartbeat. Go to the nature, lay on the grass. There's so much abundance. Look at the sky, look at the sun. The sun, it's not like, okay, we got to end this. There's no more abundance for the day, right? It will go shine somewhere else, but it's not like you're clocked out of abundance. So you get to give your mind evidence of abundance. And if your, um, if your goal or focus in abundance, it's money, which is perfectly fine because I love teaching on this topic, uh, you get to redefine your relationship with money. I used to treat money as a booty call. Now I want you, now I don't. Now I want to spend you, now I don't trust you. Where are you? Where are you going? Like I had such a like push and pull relationship with money. I had to change that. Because if I would ask you today, the way you're treating money, do you want to be treated? What would you say? Probably no. Yeah. Yeah. If you would have asked me just three years ago, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, I didn't, I, I didn't check on my money. I didn't check on my bank accounts. I get money, I spend money, I spend more money than I made. It doesn't matter if I made 5,000 or $15,000, I would spend a couple thousand more than I made because I didn't value money. I didn't respect money. I thought that I have to be working really hard to make the money and then I couldn't hold on to it because I didn't feel worthy. And I thought that I have to be investing in people and, and things just so I can feel worthy of having these things and relationships in my life. So if your desire is to enrich your life, which is absolutely a beautiful thing because more good people made great money, we can make great things, right? Um, I truly believe that you get to redefine your relationship with money. And I started to do my uh, weekly money dates, you know, because if you're in relationship, it's not like you will check on your partner like once in three months because the taxes or payments are due, right? You will text them every day because you're in love or you will have a date once a week because you want to see them. You want to know how they are doing. So, you know, to, to answer your question about abundance, first of all, you get to give your mind evidence. Second of all, you get to start learning to drop into your heart and drop into those moments when you are feeling abundant, whether it's like your lungs being full with the fresh air when you're after run or because you can run or because you can stretch or because you can hug your loved ones. Those moments are the moments that make me feel the richest. When we're laying in a park with my fiance and he's doing tapping on me. I feel so thankful, so thankful that I have somebody who sees me and it's present to me. Start appreciating the abundance. You will feel better. And when you're feeling better, you're attracting better because you're not looking at this gap. Like, why am I doing all these things, all my vision boards and all, and I don't see anything happening because you put a condition on it. It has to happen this way. Let the universe do its thing. There is always a divine timing. It's not like you go to the restaurant, you order food with your wife and two minutes later, you run to the kitchen. I was like, hey guys, are you sure you got my order? Do you want me to show you how I like it? Are you working on it? No, you don't. You stay, you have a great conversation with your wife while they're working on your order. The same happens with the universe. You know how happy I am that so many things didn't happen in my life? The universe can see the bigger picture. We don't. So you get to trust the divine timing. If I would be making the money I'm making today, like five years ago, I would screw it up. I wouldn't know how to invest. I wouldn't know how to take care of my team. I wouldn't know how to treat my money. I would screw it up. Now I'm investing. Now I'm saving. Now I'm investing in my business growth. I'm happy. But I didn't have this relationship years ago. I love that. I think those are those are great lessons for for all of us. And uh, 
I have another question for you, Kitya. So what, why is this so important to you? Like what's, what's your essence? Mm, I love this question. Thank you. And, you know, like I, like I mentioned in the beginning of our podcast, I attempted a suicide and my uncle did suicide. And it's something that I can see in the people's eyes, this disparate feeling of there must be more in life and I'm not living it. I was going through so much pain. I don't want nobody to go through that pain. I don't want people to take their lives. I don't want people to live in depression. I don't want people to live in the pain. I want people to live abundant and rich lives. And I want them to have the freedom. That's what I really want. That lights me up. That's why I'm here. Yeah. And how does it make you feel when you, you're helping someone? Oh, it's like... It's, it's this moment, this feeling inside of you, like, this is why I'm here. This is why I came for. It's like, you know, it's, it feels freeing. It feels loving. It feels warm. It feels, it feels like it makes sense. <laughs> it feels like this is why I came here. It's meant to be easy. It's meant to be easy. Yeah. And what are you seeing in the world today that you would want to be a part of uh, changing? Mm, love it. Um, for me, it's I feel like more people stepping into their truth, right? And stepping into uh, more of the self-care, whether it's, you know, like your body, your mind, your health. I'm so passionate about health. You know, like my clients, they, when they start working with me, they start like, celery juicing and smoothies and working out you know some of them already like became vegan i'm not telling them like oh you have to do this right to achieve like your ultimate like abundance but they see me what it did for me so embodying the like i am the person who i always wanted to be right like who i aspired to be so um I think it's super important to really embody, embody the essence, embody the life that you want to be living, embody the energy you want to get back into your life. Yeah, I love that. And for people that are kind of off track now, they were on track, everything was going well. And then, you know, we all know that life happened to many this past year and it always does. So what, like, what are the first step to kind of get back to, to reality or, or and not to reality, but to, to, the, to the life you dream about or making the changes necessary? You know, it, it really starts with the small steps one day at a time. For me, what makes the biggest difference and that I do every single day, it's my morning routine, right? So in the morning, I create a space for myself where I'm feeling expansive, where I'm feeling good, when I'm feeling that I can do anything. So I don't grab my phone and, and I don't go there, you know, reacting to the world. I create a space. So that's somewhere that you can start, whether it's two minutes or two hours, start with yourself, connect with your body, connect with your bread, connect with your vision, do your visualization. I have like a dream book, right? So we, we go through the book and we have like pictures there of the things that we would love in our life with my fiance. So create a space, you with you. That's very important. That will help you get back into alignment, back into the track because... If you start and you are just reacting to the world, you will be just doing what the world wants from you versus you creating your own world. Yeah, no, I love that. And I just want to say to everybody that are listening to this, and if you're going through a, something tough in your life now, or just want to take your life to the next level, just know that we see you, we love you. We're here to support you, both me and Petia. So please reach out to us if you if you want some support and, or just tell us about your dream or your goals, uh, we, are, we are here. And I know, just like you said that, you know, just watching a podcast or reading a book or a YouTube clip, you know, right now that might be your mentor, somebody that can help you take the first step to move a little bit closer to where you thrive and what's important to you. And just like you said in the beginning, it's not going to like shift like this. It's going to be small, small steps that is going to align and move you in the right direction. Uh, but it has to start somewhere. And that somewhere could be, you know, right now. I even know 
Tony Robbins always say that, you know, write a goal and make the first step right now, not after. Start, start the movement. Uh, so my final, my final question to you is when people are done with this show uh, here today, what is the first step they can do to, you know, get closer to what they want? I love that. So first to get closer to what do you want this knowing what you want. So after listening all of this, that we like planted the seeds in your mind, like invest like 10, 15 minutes and sit down with your journal and really access your life. Ask yourself if nothing ever changes in my life, am I okay with that? And if you're not okay with that, what would you like your life look like, right? What is your dream life? What is it looking like? What are you doing throughout the day? How are you creating impact and income? And then again, what is that you can do now? What is that you can do today? This is very important. So the journaling can be just getting clarity, can be the first step for you, but also giving yourself permission to change. My dreams and desires five years ago are not the same as they are today. Give yourself permission to change. Maybe you wrote the goals in January. Hey, it's April. I don't know when this is launching, but you know, it's like a few months later after your, you know, new year intentions, create new ones, create new ones if they don't feel aligned anymore. Give yourself permission to change. Yeah, that's awesome. And I mean, one, my biggest takeaway from today's show is, you know, if you're a guy to let the feminine be a part of your life. It's it's gonna make life more fun uh, and uh, loving, and at the end of the day, successful as well. Whatever that means for you, uh, Petya. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. If people want to connect with you, work with you, what's the best way to get in touch? I think the best way it's on my website because there's everything. My name, Petya Kolobova, it's my website.com and then Instagram. I love Instagram. I'm there daily, you know, sharing information and trainings on my stories. So that's a fun place to be. Awesome. And thank you everybody for listening to this show, being here with us, watching, listening. You know, we are committed to your happiness, your success and you building the life you want. Please let me know how, how it goes. Let me know like what we can help you with. You can check us out at ilovesuccess.co. We have almost 250 episodes right now. I can't even believe it myself. Everything adds up. I started with one show, one person, and promised myself I'm going to ask open-heartedly uh, for the people that I really want to talk to, to come and share. And here we are today, uh, 200 and something episodes later. It, it's incredible. And I'm, I'm just, just so happy. And it's nothing special with me. Uh, I just do it every week and it brings so much joy to my life and hopefully to yours as well. Thanks again, guys. And uh, this is the I Love Success podcast. And I hope to see you guys next week.